Hello there, how are you going? Good morning. Did you have an absolutely fantastic weekend? It was really chilly here on Saturday morning here in Sydney, like really, really chilly. Um, but it fined up and this afternoon was great and I managed to get out for a hike up at North Head, um, just down here at Manly and we were climbing over rocks. We went down the cliff and then back up the gully and it was, yeah, lots and lots of fun. Good challenge on the body, getting the climbing legs and the arms and everything going. So I had lots of fun the, um, yesterday afternoon. So I'm back again, continuing on the Understanding Menopause video series. Now, if you've got any questions, please ask them in the comments. Um, I've got my iPad in front of me with, so I can see any questions that might come up in the group and or live on the page I will see here on my screen in front of me. So today we're going to talk about insulin, which is another hormone. Um, I just want to pull my notes up now just to make sure I cover everything off because there's a lot to do with insulin. Now, particularly what I'm talking about is insulin resistance. Now, I just give you a little bit of overview of what insulin is and then we'll go into a little bit more in detail how that might impact the way you feel at this stage of life. So insulin is a hormone and it's released by our pancreas and it's required for regulating of our blood sugar. So when we eat foods that have um, sugars in them, whether or not um, it's just sugar, sugar, like processed sugars, or we're eating foods like fruits and vegetables, so carbohydrate foods which have some sugars in them, um, we break these down and the sugar circulates in our blood. Now, we can't have too much sugar in our blood. So if we've got too much sugar in our blood, that can actually give us um, serious health concerns. And this is where diabetes comes about, is a sign of too much sugar in the blood. So the blood sugar levels are too high. If blood sugar levels actually get too low, that can also cause a problem too, because that can actually send you into, uh, it can actually send you unconscious coma and, and can also finally kill you. So we need to have the, the sugar regulated. So this is where the hormone um, insulin comes in. Now, if you think oh, insulin is a bit like a gatekeeper. So when we take sugar, it has to get into the cells because when it's in the cells is when the cells can utilise that sugar for energy. We need to get it into the cells. So the insulin basically controls what comes into the cell. So imagine we've got... A, just say we've got a cell and it's got gates on it and the sugar molecule comes up and kind of knocks on the gate and the insulin goes, yeah, I've got space for some more sugar. So it opens the gate and then the sugar comes in and then it closes down. And this happens on every single cell. And then once all of the cells are full of sugar and there's no more cells ready available to hold new sugar, insulin says, well, if there's still much too much sugar in the blood, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that excess sugar and I'm going to take send it to the liver and the liver is going to convert it and it's going to store it as fat. So it stores it at fat and where, where it stores that fat is generally around the tummy and the organs. And the reason why it stores it there is in case it needs to get it back really quickly. So if you run out of, so say for instance, in the past when there wasn't enough food, if you ran out of energy um, and there was no more energy left in the cells, we needed to quickly convert the fat back from fat back to sugar and use that as energy. So it gets stored in places where it's quite easy to be converted and quite often that's around our stomach. Now, that's how insulin should work when everything's working okay and it's all in balance. But what happens is we can get insulin resistance. And this happens when we're continually eating foods which are high in sugars. And, and so sugar comes down, it comes to the cell, starts knocking on the door, insulin opens up the, the gate, allows the sugar in. But then after a while, because it's always opening up the gates, because there's always sugar out there, so it's always opening up the gates. And after a while, we can get what's called sugar or insulin resistance in that the insulin stops responding because it's kind of, it's worn out. You know? it's, it's tired of opening the gates all the time. And what it does then is it just starts sending all this extra sugar into fat stores. So we become resistant to the in insulin and we just start to store fat and we store this fat around our tummy. Now, this um, 
insulin resistance increases our risk of some certain chronic diseases, and these include um, type 2 diabetes. So insulin is almost like a pre-diabetic state, and if you don't do something about it, you are at really high risk of getting um, type 2 diabetes. We've got obesity, we've got cardiovascular disease, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, thyroid issues, muscle loss, fat gain, fatty liver, cancers, different cancers, all have been associated or all are associated with insulin resistance and also Alzheimer's disease there. We're seeing that there is a, a connection between insulin resistance and Alzheimer's disease. So what does this all mean to um, being in menopause? Now, what I want to say is menopause doesn't cause insulin resistance, but insulin resistance can make your symptoms of menopause worse. So do you understand that? That menopause isn't calling, causing insulin resistance. You already have insulin resistance, but insulin resistance is making your symptoms worse. So what causes insulin resistance? And as I said, your diet high in um, processed sugars, high in sugars, it, we're not overly concerned about foods that are high in sugars in that they're um, plant foods, so fruit and vegetables, because those sugars have got fibres attached to them as well, and that actually show, slows down the um, sugar metabolism. So it's more to do with the processed foods and um, foods that are high in processed sugars. So your, you know, your cakes, your um, all your white foods, white breads, white pastas, white, white, white. Um, Thing, all the processed stuff is really um, increases your risk of insulin resistance. Alcohol increases your risk of insulin resistance. If you've got a family history of diabetes, that will also increase your risk. If you've had gestational diabetes when you were pregnant, that also can increase your risk. Um, PCOS is another condition which is associated with insulin resistance. Um, not getting enough exercise um, is associated with um, insulin resistance. Whilst I don't use the BMI as a great um, measure of anything much, but if you've got a BMI greater than um, 29, you're a higher risk. Use of um, SSRI antidepressants also because it tends to um, suppress your appetite and you eat more carbohydrate types of foods and you, you hold on to weight. Steroid medications, so if you're taking um, long-term steroids can also um, impact high levels of stress can also impact your um, in, uh, your risk of insulin resistance. So, if you have been diagnosed with insulin resistance, or if you think maybe you have, there's a couple of things that you can um, do to determine whether or not you might have insulin resistance. And these are uh, some of these are quite simple things that you can just do yourself without having to see a doctor. Um, your waist to hip measurement. So measuring your waist and then looking at your hip and then looking at the ratio. So the ratio should be great, no greater than 0 0.8. So your waist should be a smaller than your hips. And if your waist is greater or the same as your hips, you are, you are more likely that you have insulin resistance. So it is important that those that waist, because it's it, we're really talking about your waist measurement. When it's insulin, um, insulin and cortisol, a stress hormone, is all about the um, the waist measurement. So because that's where insulin stores fat is around the waist, and also so does cortisol, which is your stress hormone that I'll be talking later um, in the week. But high levels of cortisol also are a high risk of insulin, so they're very much tied together. Um, also, there's a condition known as encanthosis nigricans. But basically what that is is darkened patches of skin and particularly around the neck, elbows, knees and armpits. If you're noticing that some of your skin is, and you see this sometimes on older people, um, particularly overweight people, you can see the dark patches of skin in these areas um, that is a sign that, um, well, it's that's often associated with insulin resistance. So it would be uh, an indication that maybe you should go and get a few things checked out. Also skin tags, 
can also be a sign of insulin resistance. Now, to find out exactly if you have insulin resistance, you will need to get a fasting insulin test done by your doctor or an HB1AC test. Um, so going and seeing your doctor to actually get a fasting insulin test is um, the way to get it diagnosed, officially diagnosed. But having said that, what can we do to reverse all of this? Well, obviously, the obvious things are start by changing your diet. If you've got a diet that is high in processed foods, lots of white breads, white, white, carp, uh, white pasta, all the white stuff, all the carb stuff, then you need to start eliminating that and getting more, more whole foods into your diet. So lots more vegetables, lots more plants, reducing um, the sugary drinks if you're having sugary drinks, also alcohol, um, which is very high in sugar. Um, so that, that's your first step. Then start to move, making sure that you're moving on a regular basis um, because that starts to, once you start to move, it starts to regulate your hormones and support all of your hormones, not just insulin. If you smoke, and I would hope that nobody is smoking these days, but smoking is um, a really high risk factor for insulin resistance as well as so many other conditions. So just um, stop smoking, find a way to stop smoking, get some support to do that because it's just not good for your health um, in any form whatsoever. Making sure that you're getting enough sleep. And I know that this can be tough for some women at this stage of life, but you know, starting to make the changes like changing your diet and moving, then you'll start to find that your hot flushes, your night sweats start to come down and that your sleep will improve. So. When we're not getting enough sleep, um, it does impact um, another hormone, which is called ghrelin. And ghrelin is our, um, it's, it's ghrelin and leptin. So ghrelin is our appetite stimulating hormone. So it makes us want to be, it makes us hungry all the time. So you know that if you haven't had a good night's sleep, you will probably feel hungry and you're going for carbs and really quick hit energy food. So when we get a good night's sleep, we're able to, um, bring down the, the ghrelin so we're not hungry and leptin is our feel full and so we start we feel full after we eat so we regulate these hormones but these hormones are actually um, balanced and produced at night time and if we're not getting the right and uh, right level of sleep these hormones will come out of balance and then obviously we've got to look at the stress side, side of that as well if you're not sleeping then you increase your um, stress hormones which then decreases your ability of your insulin to do its job and speaking of stress, reduce stress. <laughs> so as I just said, cortisol, which is a stress hormone, does impact your ability to be able to, um, for, for insulin to be able to do its job pro properly. And what, it, what happens is when your body is in a state of high stress, what it does, it just actually continually, um, first off, it, it releases all the sugar because it thinks that you need to be able to run away from the tiger, but it releases the sugar into your bloodstream. And then if you're not actually doing anything because you only got stressed because you got a nasty email, then all of a sudden you've got this blood back in the, you've got the sugar in the, the bloodstream, which now has to be, something has to happen to it. And it's been released out of the cells. So what insulin goes, does is, okay, let's go store that as fat and puts it back around the waist. So this is why you will continue to get, weight gain around the waist because you keep firing out the, the sugar into the blood and the, and the body goes, well, there's nothing to do with it. I've got no energy. Like I've got all this energy in my blood, but I've got nowhere to expand that energy because there's no threat. And then insulin goes, okay. Or if the insulin isn't working properly, everything just goes and gets put as fat around the tummy. So it's kind of like what comes first the stress or the insulin is the insulin and the stress and it just keeps going round and round. So reducing stress is another way you can reduce your um, your insulin levels. And, look, just finding time just to be quiet and whether or not that's um, taking some time for meditation, taking some time for journaling, just being mindful. For me, it's getting out in nature, which is why I went, you know, I go hiking and climbing through the bush and scrambling over rocks on the weekends because 
it's for me, I'm so in the moment when I'm doing that. I cannot be thinking about what I'm doing, what other things that are going on when I'm actually walking through the bush. I need to know where every foot's going on the ground because if I'm thinking of other things, I'm likely to fall over and I can hurt myself. So I am so totally present. And, you know, finding ways where you can be really present or mindful about what's going on and when it comes to eating, being really mindful about the food that you're putting into your body and is this food that's going to nourish you, is this food that's going to support you or is it food that's going to cause your body to react um, or hold on to excess energy around the waist, knowing that when you're doing this, you're also making those symptoms, the hot flushes, the joint pains, all the other symptoms that are associated with menopause, you're making them worse. So somewhere along the, the in the scheme of things, you have to start making a change. And whether or not, you know, it, it's like looking at your diet and saying, what can I do differently? If I don't want these symptoms, if I don't want my health to go down, if I don't want my health to change, what do I need to do differently? Because your body is giving you a message right now. It's telling you that things are out of balance. It's telling you your hormones are out of balance. Yes, you could go and take a pill to, um, you know, so-called balance up your hormones, but it's not balancing anything if you're not actually changing the way you're eating, the way you're living your life, the stress and all of that. So that's it from me today. Hopefully that was useful for you. Have an absolutely fantastic day and I will be back tomorrow with another Understanding Menopause video. So from my heart to yours, infinite love and gratitude. Bye for now.